hands together. Let's welcome in our friends and loved ones that are joining us from around the world. Happy New Year. We love you. We thank you for letting us be a part of your life and uh, open your heart every week so that you can hear from God and tuning in. Share this with a friend, with a loved one. It is week one of 2020. Yes, it is. And it is also week one of this new series that I have titled, Same God, New Me. Say it with me. Same God, God. New Me. me. That's right. God is the same yesterday, today, forevermore. He is unchanging. That's what the Word of God teaches us. He does not change. But you and I, hello somebody. You and I. We are transformed, right? And and that is a long life. That is that is not a it never stop. Every day we're growing. Every day God is just kind of showing us different things. So I'm excited about this series. We're gonna about to take a journey, y'all. And God is going to show himself merciful and mighty. Man, I'm believing that this year will be your greatest year. I'm believing that over your life. Come on, somebody, give me a good amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And because because he is the same, but yet we are made new every day, uh, we can we can say faithfully that that. By the time this year is done, get ready, because you're about to see the best version of me. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, get ready to see the best version of me. Come on, look at the other neighbor and tell him, neighbor, get ready, because this year you will see the best version of me. Come on, I want to do something. I want to, I want to pray first as we ready our hearts to hear from the Lord. I want to lead with prayer. Father, we thank you. You're a good God. You're a faithful God. Always on time. And Father God, I declare right now that we are good ground to receive your word. Stretch us. Love on us. Do what you always do. Surpass our every expectation. We will give you all the glory and all the honor because you are worthy of all the praise. And we pray this in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, amen Amen and amen. I want to ask you to sit down and open up your RWC Church app. As I always do, I want to challenge you to open it and follow along so that we can grow together. If it's your first time here, can I see your hand? Any first timers here? Any first timers? Come on, let's give... Come on, let's give them a special welcome. So cool. Thank you for joining us on this first Sunday of 2020. Man, we are so excited. I wanted to start off this teaching just acknowledging what God has done in the last quarter of 2019. You see, in the last quarter of 2019, over 200 people accepted Jesus at RWC as Lord and Savior. That's, that's awesome. So because, because that is the case, and later on this month, we're going to have a praise report for you guys and everything God did in 2019. Uh, but, but because that is the case, there, there's a good possibility that you're here today or you might be listening online and hearing us and seeing us that, that you accepted the Lord in the last quarter. So because that's the case, I, I want to I share with you some things. For starters, uh, we are a church of next steps. We're, we're a church of next steps. We're, you're constantly going to hear that from us. We are a church of next steps. Pastor Eli, what do you mean? All of us are on a spiritual journey. All of us, myself included. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell them, you too, you too. That's right. Now look at your second choice and say, definitely you, definitely you. <laughs> yeah, but, but we're, all, we're all on a spiritual journey. And if you look at the Bible, if you study the Word of God, what I have found is that on more than 20 occasions, we see a pattern in Scripture. And that pattern can be summarized with four phrases. And that is that God wants you and I to know him. 
That's right. God wants you to know him. And when we use the word know, we're not just talking about information, but God would want you to have an intimate relationship with him. That's the word know right there. The second thing that we see in scripture is that God would want us to find freedom. That's right. All of us have a past. You have a past, I have a past, and God wants to reconcile your yesterday. God wants to reconcile the pain, the hurt, right? God wants to deal with that, and he's made a way, so God wants you to find freedom. The third thing that I see in Scripture is that God would want for you and I to discover our purpose, Now, when we talk about the word purpose, if you've been here for a week or if you've been here for 10 years, you know that there's a word that we're going to use quite often, and that's the word purpose. We believe that none of us are here by accident. doesn't matter what your mama told you. You are not an oops. You are here. You are here. You were destined by God to fulfill an assignment. That's why the two most important days of your life are the day that you are born and the day that you find out why you were born. So God would want you to discover your purpose. And then lastly, God, I see in scripture that God wants us to make a difference. So we've created an entire curriculum. We call it the growth track. Week one starts today. You can jump on that right after this service. But every one of our teachings, every one of our series, every one of our sermons is built around these four principles that God wants you to know him, God wants you to find freedom, God wants you to discover your purpose, and God wants you to make a difference. So that's what God wants to do with you. Now let me give you my job description. What do I do? And this is where I come in. Because where I come in is that, that, that we all need someone to push us every once in a while. Amen, somebody. I didn't say you like them. But we all need someone that will push us into our prophetic destiny, into that place that God has prepared for you. We all need someone in our life. We all need a trainer, y'all. And, and that's kind of what I do as your pastor. Sometimes you'll hear me and you'll, you'll be like, man, my pastor loves me. Other times you'll hear me and you'll be like, we got to pray for our pastor. <laughs> but, but, I, but, I, but I tell you, I tell you that that's my, my part of my responsibility before the Lord and really before you as, as the church that God has given me the honor and privilege to pastor is that my job is to push you. And it reminded me, it reminded me of, of something that happened to me in the city of Framingham, Massachusetts. Years ago, when I was in business, I was at a business meeting, and uh, one of my colleagues told me, Eli, why don't you take my car back? I had carpooled with him, and he says, why don't you drive my car? I'm going to go with, with my friend. I got to talk some business. And I said, no problem, I'll drive your car. After all, I was a brand new BMW, y'all. So I was like, man, I was super excited. I'm driving this brand new uh, 5 Series BMW. It was, it, was, it was not an automatic. It was a stick shift, you know. And, and I wasn't really that used to driving them, but, but I could drive them because, you know, I'm, I'm from South Holyoke. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know. <laughs> but that's another teaching. That's another series, you know. But, uh, but as I was driving, I'm getting ready to jump on the Mass Pike, and I just want to paint this picture for you. I'm getting ready to jump on the Mass Pike, and, and it's, a, it's a red light, and it turns green, and I shift into first gear, so I thought, and the car shuts down. And then it goes from being green to red again, y'all. And then there's a long line because they're waiting, they're waiting to get on the mass pike. So, so now, man, I'm freaking out. I, I'm thinking, man, is the clutch bad in this thing? So I turn the car back on, and once again, I'm going into first gear to, to jump on the highway, and the car shuts down. And for a second time, the light went from being green to being red. So by now, by now... If you could only imagine what's happening, there is a long line of cars from people from the eastern part of the state, y'all. Now, in the western part of the state, there's still hope for salvation for us. Yes, there is. 
but in the eastern part of the state. And if you're from the eastern part of the state, we're praying for you. We're, we're praying that the blood of Jesus can do. But everybody was honking the horns and, and they were talking in sign language. I don't know what they were doing. But uh, finally, my buddy calls me and he says, Eli, when you're shifting, you just got to go straight forward. You can't tilt the shift. You're actually going into reverse. And I'm thinking to myself, well, you should have told me. But I'll never forget, I'll never forget the sense of urgency that I felt being on this light and it turning green and me being unable to move. So today and throughout this series of Same God, New Me, I want you to put your seatbelt on. It, it's going to get a little bit uncomfortable, but I promise you that your 2020 is going to be your greatest year. I believe that wholeheartedly for you, for your marriage, for your children, for your finances, for your business. I'm believing that. Why, Pastor? Because it's going to be your greatest spiritual year. I believe that. I believe that. And I thought about, I thought about a story in Scripture. It's found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verse 57 through 62. And with this, I'm going to tell you what my theme for this sermon is. Specifically, I'm going to read from the Message Bible. It's, a, it's more of a commentary. I like to use it because it's very simple. And I, I love two things more than anything. And that is simplicity and comfort. So don't, don't be fooled by, man, if I could have some joggers and a tea <laughs> and some Crocs, I would preach that way every Sunday. But then nobody would come. <laughs> Look at what the Bible says. Luke chapter 9, verse 57 through 62. The Bible says, on the road, someone asked if he could go along. They're asking Jesus if, if they could follow him. And, and, and this guy says, I'll go with you wherever. <laughs> but Jesus was curt. In other words, Jesus was very sharp with his words. And he told him, are you ready to rough it? We're not staying in the best inns, you know. Jesus said to another, follow me. But he said, certainly, but before I do, please excuse me for a couple of days. I have to make arrangement for my father's funeral. But Jesus refused and he said, first things first, your business is life, not death. And life is urgent. Somebody say urgent. urgent. And you need to announce God's kingdom. Then another one said, I'm ready to follow you, master. Like, I'm ready. They're not ready. They're full of excuses. But, but, but I'm ready. But first, excuse me while I get things straightened out at home. You ever, you ever use that excuse, I'm not ready? I can't. I can't serve. I, I can't do that. I got I to gotta strain out some things at home. But Jesus said, I love this, no procrastination, no backward looks. You can't put God's kingdom off till tomorrow. You've got to seize the day. I want to speak to you. I want to speak to you over the next several minutes on the theme, seize the day. I believe that there are moments, and I want you to please grab this right now. I believe that there are moments in time that what God has for you is specifically designed for a day and for a moment. Like there, there are things that can wait, but then there are other things that you just can't wait. You've got to seize the day. You've got to understand that when God is speaking, there are moments that we have to be opportunistic and jump on it. We've got to jump all over it. So today I want to speak to you about seizing the opportunity that God has for you. Why, Pastor? Because if this is going to be your greatest year, you've got to have more than resolutions. You've got to have a transformation. I'm going to say that again. 80% of resolutions get abandoned by Valentine's Day. They don't work. Why? Because there's not a real change from the inside out. 
It's just an emotional thing, but I want to challenge you. I believe that God really wants you to have your best year, but if you're going to seize the moment, there are things you've got to move on from. In other words, there's some things that you've got to create distance from. The first one is we've got to move on from old history. For those of you that are taking notes, fill that in right there. We've got to move on from old history. When I talk about old history, I'm talking about the event, the failure, the divorce, the breakup. We're, we're taking the baggage from the previous year and the previous year. And in some cases, we're even taking the baggage from the previous decade, 10 years plus ago, and we're bringing it into this new decade. And yet God is telling us we've got to move on from that old history. I love the way that the Bible puts it. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 and 19 says this. It says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Do not dwell on the past. See, look at what God says, see, I am doing a new thing. Somebody say a new thing. How many people are believing God for a new thing in this new year? Come on, say it with me, new thing for a new year. So God says, I am doing a new thing. I love what it says next. It says, now it springs up. In other words, it can surprise you. At any given moment, God can surprise you. I love when God surprises me. I really do. Like, I love surprises. Like, I love surprises. Like, uh, 30, 30 days leading to my birthday and 30 days after my birthday. Like, I have like this 90-day grace period that every gift that's coming towards me, I, I, I hope it's for me. Like, I'm, like I'm just... I love, I love surprises, right? But, but there's no greater surprise that when God surprises you, when you understand that it's not a coincidence, it's, a, it's God orchestrated a time. It's a divine appointment between the heavenlies and your life. Like you're frustrated and you've, you've reached your wit's end and every door you touch doesn't open. And I believe that your frustrations have brought you to a place. It's a crossroads where God is going to meet you like never before. I believe that for your life. So then, so then the prophet says, you see, I'm doing a new thing. God says, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. And then he asked this question. The question that I want to ask today. And the question that the prophet Isaiah asks is this, do you not perceive it? This is where, this is where I see uh, many people, and, and I get a little bit flustered. I'm just going to be, just be transparent with you guys because this is the only way I know how to be, y'all. But, but there are people that, that I look at them, and, and man, I see the grace and the favor of God all over them. Like they're just, they radiate with so much charisma and so much potential. And, and there's nothing more frustrating than for you to see someone that has so much potential, but they can't see it on themselves. So today, today I want to, I want to just kind of, I, I want to make it known that God is asking you today, do you not perceive what I'm doing? I believe that the Christian walk should be a walk of expectation. Like I'm walking, I'm expecting a miracle. I'm expecting for God to open a door. I'm expecting, God says, I'm going to, I'm going to get ready because I am, look at what it says. Look at what it says in the next verse. It says, I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. In other words, there are some places of your life that are barren. They are not fruitful. And God says, with my blessing, that which was dead is going to come back to life. That which could not produce will multiply. That which could not, what, that which you thought was the end, God says, I'm going to give you a new beginning. That's why don't give up hope. God can still rescue your marriage and rescue your children and turn your finances around. I don't know who this word is for, but grab it in Jesus' name today for your life do you not perceive it i'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland 
So the first thing that God tells us to move from is move from the old history. The second thing that God is telling us to move on from, number two, we've got to move on from bad habits. Somebody say bad habits. You got them, I have them, we all have them. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell them, you've got them, I've got them, we've all got them. Come on, look at your other, look at the person on the other side. Some, you got them for sure, for sure. You got them. I got them. We all got. Them. We all got. Them. All of us. We we've all got bad habits. And, and maybe when we think about bad habits, the first thing that people think about is addictions, right? And the first thing that people think about when they hear the word addiction, they think about narcotics and drugs and alcohol. But, but for some of us, some of us have to really consider the amount of time that we're giving to things like social media. Yeah, that's why, that's why I, I want to applaud those of you that have taken the plunge and have said, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a soul fast. I'm going to do the soul fast. I'm going to disconnect from social media. I'm going to give that time to the Lord, that time to self-reflect, that time to look in the mirror and ask God, God, what is that you want to do in my life? Maybe, maybe for you, it's, it's foul language. Maybe, maybe for you, what you've got to, the bad habit you've got to break is a bad attitude. Hello, somebody. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, because the cup is never, is never half full for you. It's always half empty. Oh, there's never a good day for you. Oh, it's gray. Oh, it's raining. Oh, it's no. Oh, my gosh. I want to go somewhere where there's palm trees. Yeah. If you think that the grass is greener on the other side, don't forget that you've got to water and you've got to mow that grass too. Hello, somebody. So, so some of us have to break from the bad habit of <laughs> the bad habit of a poor attitude. And consider this just a lightly shove. Like, I don't want to offend anybody. I, I love you and respect you, but I believe that God is telling us this. And as I was studying, God was really putting this in my heart. Eli, tell my people that that they've got they've got to break away from this. That's why we're fasting. Hello. That's why we're fasting. For me, for me, I, I, for me, it's sweets, y'all. Like, I have a problem. It is. Like, I go to the grocery store, and I need groceries, and I walk out with, with apple pie and vanilla ice cream. You know that's a problem. No, no, I mean... I mean, I'm making light of it now, but one of the things that the Lord has been dealing with me is this whole sweet thing because I love sweets. Like, I think about sweets. Like, I have dreams with sweets. Like, like I think about the dessert before the dinner, y'all. Like, who needs that? Let's just go right for the ice cream and the hot fudge and the... So I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this up to the Lord because, listen, anything that exceeds moderation and anything that goes to an extreme is not good. Listen up. If it has you, it's not good. If you can't control it, it's not good. If it's causing you to lose sleep, it's not good good please listen up so god says we've got to move on from bad habits that's why we're fasting because when we fast we starve the bad habit the only way for you to break a bad habit number one is for you to acknowledge that it's a bad habit because if you just walk around like i don't got a problem everybody else has a problem but i don't got a problem i don't got a problem i don't got a problem is everybody a problem i don't got a problem <laughs> And you're, then if you don't think you've got a problem, then guess what? You're never going to break free from that. But then the second thing that you have to do if you want to break the bad habit, you've got to starve it. You've got to stop giving it attention. You've got to stop giving it investment of your time, of your energy, of your resource. After all, that's why we're fasting. Look at what the Bible says, Isaiah chapter 58 verse 6. Is not this the kind of fasting that I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free and break 
every yoke. Come on, somebody. That was a good time to worship the Lord. That was a good time to celebrate that God is getting ready to break some bad things from your life after these 21 days. I'm declaring that after the 21 day fast, things that have been holding on to you like a leech will have to let you go in Jesus' name. Why, Pastor? Because God has made a way for it. Give me a good amen. Amen. Praise God. The third thing that we've got to move on from, number three, we've got to move on from old hurts. We've got to move on from old hurts. That's right. You're walking around wounded. Like you're, you, you put on a good game and you smile and, and you're the life of the party and everybody thinks you're okay, but you're not. Listen up, y'all. There is nothing wrong with not being okay. The problem is when we walk around like we are okay when we're not. And then we expect everybody else to notice when we choose not to open ourselves to them. So then we're mad at the world and nobody calls me. But when they called you and asked you how you were doing, you didn't tell them nothing. Right? So we have to, we have to acknowledge that, that we're not okay so that we can reach out to our helper. God is our helper. So if you're wounded, you're in the right place. If you've been betrayed and rejected, you are in the right place. If you're just going through a tough divorce, a traumatic experience, a breakup, welcome, welcome to a judgment-free zone where the Spirit of God lives, where His power still remains restores where his love man come on where his love gives encouragement and brings about healing yes sir yes sir so what do we do pastor what do we do when we've, we've when we've been hurt you do nothing and, and by nothing i don't mean in action by nothing i mean that you trust in what god says you are you see, you're not going to fight your battles the way that you used to fight your battles. There's someone who's already paid the price for you, and now he says, if you're silent, I'll speak for you. If you rest, I will work, but if you work, then I'll rest. Take your hands off of it, and I'll put my hands in it, says the Lord. Come on, I, that was a good place to give God a shout. Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 and 18 says it this way. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, like what it says, they are a new creation. A new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Somebody say new. Somebody say same God. Same God. New me. Look at what it says. New is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. That word reconciled literally means that the balance has been brought to zero. Now let me explain this. Every time you and I have a shortcoming, every time you and I sin, every time you and I fall, every time you and I have a spiritual hiccup, God has made a way through the life, through the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because when you sin, you acquire a debt. And most of us were bankrupt. We had a debt we could not pay. That's why our life was lacking in joy, in peace, in purpose, in direction. Every day was a great day. But Jesus, I said, but Jesus... I'm going to say it again to my people over here, but Jesus, through his life, through his resurrection, now we have been reconciled. Jesus says, I got you. Jesus says, I'll pay the debt. Jesus says, I will die a sinner's death so that you can live and you can be a king in a kingdom. Come on, somebody. That is what Christianity is all about. It's not your doing, it's not my doing, it's God's doing by way of Jesus communicated to us by the power of the Holy Spirit. We now walk with this boldness, with this authority, with this confidence because we've been reconciled with the Father. 
Man, that's good. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell him I'm debt free. I'm debt free. But this is, this is where we are, church. The problem is this. The problem is that you cannot start the next chapter of your life until you turn the page. And most of us, this is what we do. Yeah, amen. I'm glad that chapter over. I'm glad. I'm glad he lived. He was no good for me anyways. And then one day you get lonely at night and you're, you're watching somebody's feed and their pretend life and their, uh, and then you're like, hmm, I'm missing. What if, what if, what if, what if, man, let me call him again. Let me slip into his DM. And, and we're, and we're, we're playing with pages, but, but it's not just a book. It's your life, y'all. So we've been stuck. We've been stuck in our 20s, and now you are 40, but you're still, you're not turning the chapters. But God says, listen, I've made a way. I've given you the power. Turn the page. Begin to live your best life today. Come on, church. Hallelujah. So we've got to turn the page. Come on, look at your neighbor, Tom. Turn the page. Come on, look at each other and turn the page. Which means that there's relationships we got to cut off. We just got to cut off. You, you close the door, but then you open the door. You close the door, but then you open the door. And then you close the door, and then you open the door. I wonder why he broke my heart. You wonder? You wonder? <laughs> I promise I, I, I'm pushing you, but it's a light push. It's a light push. It's just a light push. See, I, I, was, I was reminded as I was, as I was getting ready for this, I was reminded of the message of Jesus. See, Jesus had a very, very simple message, and it was this gospel of Matthew. We see it for the very first time, chapter 4, verse 17. This was, this was the sermon of Jesus. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break this verse, this, this text in just three parts. The first thing that Jesus tells the people is repent. Now, when I was growing up, the word repent was a word that I was afraid of. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just being honest with you guys because every time I heard the word repent, it was usually followed up with this condemnation message like, repent, you're going to hell. You're going to hell. And so, so everybody would come to the front. They would cry. Snots everywhere. Like, oh, Jesus, I repent. What if I told you that the word repent is not a negative word? What if we redefine it to its original text? It's actually a positive word. Like Jesus is telling those that are listening, guys, you've got to change the way you think. If you change the way you think, your direction will also change. So Jesus is telling those around him, if you want this to be your best season, and I came to tell someone here in Springfield, Massachusetts, and those of you that are watching us around the world, 2020 is going to be as good as your thought process is. Number one series downloaded last year, 2019. Number one podcast downloaded in RWC was the Dear Mind series, an open letter to mental health. And let me tell you something. Praise be to God that those four weeks, those five weeks were life-changing. Many testimonies. I got somebody rolled up on me at Longhorn when I was having my New York strip Parmesan crusted with a sweet potato and broccoli. Somebody... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm fasting. 
had somebody rolled up on me and say, that series, week two, changed the way that I view my life. It reconciled my relationship with my son. She brought her son to me as I was having dinner, and I just could not, man, I was just thanking God that God would give us the opportunity to preach and use the means of communication to save those that are lost. But what if, what if, as much as I love doing it, but what if God wants us to go away from that and for us to really commit and have a completely shift in our thought process? So the first thing that Jesus says is you've got to repent. You've got to change the way that you're walking. 2020 is going to be great if you change the way you're walking. Some of us have to do an about face. I like that, right? Ah, <laughs> Jesus, we got to do an about face. Some of us, some of us are walking in the wrong direction. The second thing that Jesus says is the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom. In other words, the second thing Jesus is teaching us is most of us have been kings over our own life. And Jesus is saying, mm -mm, that's not the way it works, Poppy. Let me tell you something. You are not a good king over your life. I am not a good king over my life. For the ladies of the house, you are not a good queen over your life. We are in a kingdom. We serve the king of kings and the lord of lords. Which means that you and I have to surrender our life to King Jesus, say with me, in 2020, we need King Jesus. Come on, give God a clap offering if you believe that for real. I'm going to drink to that. The third thing that Jesus says is the kingdom of God is near. It's near. And I came to tell someone that would listen that God has never been far. Like you, you think God has been far, but God has not been far. God has been there by your side in your darkest hour. You may say, Pastor, where was he? He was the glimmer of hope that you had. You may say, Pastor, where was he? He was that little piece that allowed you to fall asleep at your darkest hour. You may say, Pastor, where was he? He was the reason that they didn't kill you. They hurt you, but they didn't kill you. You may say, Pastor, where was he? He is your provision. He is your oxygen. He's been there all along. All along he's been there. He is near. He is not far. He is near to those that are brokenhearted, the Bible says. So it's time. Somebody say, it's time. Say it like you mean it, it's time. It's time for what, Pastor? It's time, number one, to get closer to God. As I get ready to close this teaching, it's time to get closer to God. James chapter 4, verse 8 says, draw near to God and God will draw near to you. So now as we, as we are fasting, and if you're not fasting and you didn't start on Thursday, you can start tomorrow. If you, you can't do it, Pastor, I can't do it for 21 days. Do it for a day. The most important thing is for you to start something and finish it. Use, use the 21 day fast to do that. Go after God like you've never gone after God before. Serve him like you've never served him. Praise him like you've never praised him. Give like you've never given. Come on, am I, am I talking? Is this good? Is this helping you? Think about it, church. What would happen? What would happen if you were to come? every Sunday if you were to come 52 Sundays out of the year if one Sunday can bless you like if if one teaching can do something for you and I know that it has my life has been marked by single teachings marked never forget where I was when God spoke to me the first time about peace about purpose if one sermon can do that can you imagine prioritizing your life around serving God it's time 
it is time to get closer to God. Number two, it is time to embrace godly friendships. God designed us for accountability. It is part of God's plan. That's why we are a church of small groups. I'm excited because in two weeks, we're launching our small groups again. I'm pumped. There's over 100 small groups launching. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited to launch my small group. You know why? Because freedom happens in the context of relationships. And it's time for us to embrace godly friendships. James chapter 5 verse 16. Confess, confess your sins to one another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Healing happens in relationship. I love that. I love this quote. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go with others. 2020 is the year that you're going to go far. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell them I need you. Come on, come on, look at your other neighbors. I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you. Number three, number three, number three, it's time. Somebody say, it's time. It's time to get in tune with purpose and with passion. Purpose and passion. Imagine what your life would be if you truly knew why you were created. Imagine how you would feel if you weren't just going through life, but you were growing through life. Some of us are just going through life. And here goes another January. And here comes February. Everything turns red. Everybody's celebrating Valentine's and posing pictures of their pretend life. Don't just go through it. Grow through it. Don't just go through your, exper for, through, your, through your experiences. Grow with every experience that you live, with every friendship that you have, with every opportunity that life affords you. Even with the baggage, I believe that the baggage can give you the thick skin that you need to grow. Some of us would not be where we are had it not been for the losses that we've had. I don't know who that's for. But I want you to take that with you. It's time. It's time to get in tune with purpose and with passion. Galatians chapter 6 verse 3 and 4. If anyone thinks they are something when they're not, they deceive themselves. So each one, look at what the Bible says, should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. I want to stop here by letting you know that it's cool to have friends that you look up to. It's cool to have mentors that are helping you and keeping you honest. But never live your life vicariously through someone else. God wants to do for you what he's done for them. God can use you the way he's using them. God wants to show himself mighty in your life the way that he's done it for them. Imagine what would happen if we connected with purpose and with passion. I love passion because passion is contagious. And lastly, it's time. Somebody say it's time. It's time to get a heart for the house. A heart for the house. And, and when I think about, and this is our theme for 2020, a heart for the house. A heart for the house. You cannot develop a heart for the house unless your heart is prostrated in worship before the Lord. Let me, let me say it this way. Let me say it this way. It, it's hard to love the house when you have yet to let God into your house. Yet when we let God in our house, watch this, when we let God inside our house, automatically we are going to have a heart for his house. Like, like there's no way for you to say, Pastor Eli, I love you, but I don't love candy. Because we're going to have problems. Because this is a package. Is a package. <laughs> Same thing with God. Like you love God, you let God in, and then God is gonna say, Man, now I've planted you in a house. Have a heart for the house. Dream a dream that's connected to the house. Don't see yourself independently from what God is doing in the church. See yourself as an extension of the church. 1500 Boston Road is not 
my, my church is building, that's my building. That's where we're going to build a house of worship to the Lord. That's where I'm going to sow. I'm going to, that's my legacy. Like the future of the church cannot be written without my name. And we all take ownership over that because we have a heart for the house. I want to finish today. But before I do, I want to leave you with this thought. Most of us are here and you're frustrated. And you can't go back. You can't go back and change the beginning. And you're living with the regret of what I could have, should have, but I didn't. And my 30s are not what they should be because my 20s were not what they were supposed to be. And you cannot change the beginning. But you can start. You can start where you are. And you can change the way that it ends you can start right now so if you're in this room and you say Eli I want Jesus I want to accept him as Lord and Savior I want nothing more than to live a life full of purpose full of passion at the count of three where you are I want you to lift up your right hand real quick one two three lift it up God bless you, 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 God bless you. Praise God. God bless you. RWC, I want you to lift up your hands with them. Everybody with hands lifted up all over this auditorium. I want you to repeat this simple prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, say, I know that I've done some wrongs, but I also know that you laid your life in the cross for my sins. So today, I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he died for me. And on the third day, he resurrected to give me life. Today, I choose life. Today, I choose Christ. Amen and amen. Hi guys, thank you for tuning in. If this message has blessed you, please don't forget to subscribe. You can share the message with your friends and loved ones. But also, if you've been touched by the ministry, I want to encourage you to partner up with us. You can follow the link below so that together we can continue to share the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. Thank you so much.